Hi everyone, it's my pleasure to explain this uh, solved problem on fluid mechanics. It's a typical problem in which there will be a large body of water stored in a tank and there will be a small orifice at the bottom and we have to find out the velocity of the flow through the smaller orifice. In this particular problem, there is a water tank on the roof and there is a tap at the bottom. So let's proceed with solving the problem. We draw a neat uh, sketch of the problem. You can see a building with a tank on the top. The water is shown in blue color and the height of the water stored is at 50.5 meters from a datum plane which is the ground. The blue line is the datum plane. We call this height as H1 and area of cross section of that water tank as A1. Water flows through a blue colored pipe which I have drawn at the bottom and it goes to a tap which we can see. The tap is the outlet and the height of the tap we can call it as H2 that's 0.5 meters from the same datum plane. The area of the tap outlet can be written as A2. We write the Bernoulli's equation. The left hand side, the energy per unit volume is for the water at the top of the tank. So P1 is the pressure acting on the water. Rho G H1, H1 is the height of the water. Half rho V1 squared, V1 is the velocity of flow of the water at the top of the tank. And on the right hand side, we have the conditions at the tap outlet. P2 is the pressure of water at the tap. Rho G H2, H2 is the height of the tap from the ground. Half rho V2 squared, V2 squared is the velocity of flow from the tap outlet. We can also solve the numerical by directly applying the end equation, but I have derived it here to make you more comfortable to know what's happening. We write the Bernoulli's equation and we use the continuity equation for section 1 and section 2. A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So V1 which is the velocity of water at the top of the tank is equal to A2 by A1 into V2. And because Bernoulli's equation has a V1 squared term, we square V1. So we get V1 squared as A2 by A1 whole squared into V2 squared. Now, we substitute this into the equation A and we get rid of the term V1 squared and I've explained step by step how the derivation happens and in the end you will get P1 plus rho G H1 plus half rho into V2 squared into A2 by A1 whole squared minus 1 is equal to P2 plus rho G H2. Now the term A2 by A1 is very very small because the tap is really small in comparison to the top tank. So A2 by A1 tends to 0. This is the most important thing to know in this, this kind of a problem. We proceed with the derivation and we substitute 0 for A2 by A1 whole squared. So that gives us P1 plus rho G H1 plus half rho V2 squared into 0 minus 1 equal to the right hand side that's P2 plus rho G H2 that is P1 plus rho G H1 minus half rho V2 squared is equal to P2 plus rho G H2. Now P1 is equal to P2 is an important thing here because both the top of the tank and the bottom of the tap are facing atmospheric pressure. Therefore the equation simplifies to rho G H1 minus half rho V2 squared equal to rho G H2. This is equation B. Rearranging we get rho g into h1 minus h2 is half rho v2 squared. Now we have v2 squared in our hands and we can say v2 squared is 2g into h1 minus h2 or v2 is the square root of 2g into h1 minus h2. This is called the Torricelli's theorem and is applied for all cases where the speed of flux is relevant. We now substitute the values for g and h1 minus h2 and we will get v2 equal to 31.3 meters per second. We have got the answer now and you just notice that we did not use 
the density of water anywhere it was not required although it was given in the problem i hope this uh, video and the picturization gives you confidence to handle all kinds of problems involving Torricelli's theorem. Thank you for your time. Uh, please write your comments, uh, subscribe to the channel, download the app or log in to the website. Have a great day. Bye-bye.